with me First Corinthians chapter 6, verse 17. I am sorry for not coming yesterday. But it's not my fault. It's not as if I was forming big man. I, I've never seen a place where all the flights are in the evening. I finished preaching on Thursday to come here on Friday. Then I was shocked with the realization that we will travel in the night. That was why I couldn't come. Because if I had hit here by 2 o'clock, Lagos, I'll be here. One hour, 30 minutes. But I couldn't make it. First Corinthians chapter 6, verse 17. Then we'll start this journey. I'll just introduce it just a little. And then I will pray for the sick. Now, can you give this guy some volume here? Is it possible? I want to hear what he's doing here. There is a new breed that God is unleashing in Nigeria. A new breed. A radical opposition against unrighteousness that is unleashed. God is beginning to speak clearly so that the people of his house can be equipped with what it takes to do business with the Holy Ghost in deep waters. The days of half measures, falsehood, and, and, and ambiguity have come and gone. Now destiny calls us. And I believe that God will choose from among us. Oh, if only you can shut in with the Holy Ghost, even your mother will say, this is not a child that gets better. Yes. If you can shut in with the Holy Ghost, you will just discover how different you are from your generation. If you can shut in with the Holy Ghost, you will know that in the Holy Ghost, He determined that you will be unique. You don't need to know. You are already unique by yourself. And the more security you find in Him, the more willing you will be to accept the uniqueness that you found in the Holy Ghost. Because in the Holy Ghost, we are not the same. Are you there? We are not the same in the Holy Ghost. When I began to swim in the Holy Ghost, I now found out that what the Holy Ghost is doing in me, the, one of the things he's doing is that he's teaching is building capacity. Nobody taught me how to teach. When I began to know the Holy Ghost, the ability to teach came out of my knowledge of the Holy Ghost. Your true self is locked up in the Holy Spirit. The Bible says, no man knoweth the things of man save the spirit of man which is in him. So your things will come out of your spirit. It is written on your spirit like the genome of your chromosomes. The genome of your chromosomes is what determines your complexion. What determines when you start having white, white hair. It's already encrypted with the writings of God. When you find the Holy Ghost, you will see your uniqueness. You will not need to do anything to be different from anybody. You will just know that you are different. When I found myself in the Holy Ghost, I realized that I, the Holy Ghost in me does not only teach. The Holy Ghost in me wages war. Now, you, you see, you see, you see, hallelujah. Like the way I see pastor as a gentle man, see his wife, so gentle and all of that. I'm not like that. As much as I respect her, I respect him. The Holy Ghost in me was, is a warrior. Maybe before this conference ends, maybe you will understand it. He was. 
He fights spiritually. You will need to find yourself. Say, so, so I'm not trying to fit into the good books of men. I, I live out the story he's telling through my vessel. Because your life in the spirit is a story that God is telling from him. In this day of social media, people want to make comments about everybody. That, hey, you know what? Oh, so, so because of the comments I'm making about you, you are trying to establish decorum. It, you, it's a betrayer of who you are in the Holy Ghost. If what they are commenting about, maybe positively or negatively, is influencing your performance, your alignment, it means you're already falling. Oh. oh my God. The Bible says, he that is joined to the Lord. This is the second aspect of the ministry of Christ. The first aspect is the incarnation. Through the incarnation, we see the example of what God had in mind before when he conceived, let us make man. The second aspect of the ministry of Christ began on the cross. That's called the inclusion. As many as were baptized into Christ were baptized into his death. You became one in, with Christ by an act of God's authority. When he included you with Christ on the cross, the only valid history that you have now is that you are baptized to the cross. So that when Jesus died, you died. When Jesus was buried, you were buried. When Jesus rose from the dead, you rose from the dead. The, ex, the history of Jesus becomes your experience. When Jesus ascended into heaven, you ascended with him. When Jesus sat down at the right hand of God, that's where you are seated now. Because of inclusion. Are you there? This scripture I asked us to read is a scripture that reveals inclusion. In the theology of inclusion, you become one with God. That's not a blessing that someone under the old covenant can claim to have ever had. But in this new covenant, we, we are one with God. The Bible says, He that is joined to the Lord is what? Now, are you there? The way your spirit is calibrated, for instance, it is calibrated to be able to engage the spirit world. And the way your flesh, your body is calibrated is that it is calibrated and it is educated to be able to interface in the natural world. Man is the only creature in the entire enterprise of creation that can legitimately operate in the spirit world and in the natural world at the same time. Even God does not have that complement. For the Bible says God is spirit. So God's operations are limited to the spirit realm. If God is going to come into this realm, he will do that through the agency of man because man can operate in God's realm and operate in this physical realm. If Satan wants to come into this realm because Satan is spirit, he will need to do it through the agency of man. If, if in your family there is darkness, raging, raging, don't look for spirits. First of all, look for man. There is a human being that has opened the gate to the devil because Satan is spirit. You are not following me. Satan is what? He needs a human being to come into your family. All the plunder you have experienced in your family, there is a human being that is devoted to Satan that, that has allowed Satan to walk through his spirit, through his soul, through the wisdom that Satan gives him to bring people in that family into bondage. That's the way God wants to walk through you. From your spirit, through your soul. Aye. Maybe, maybe tomorrow, I will now give you the implication of 1 Corinthians chapter 6, verse 17. That's why we have what is called spiritual shepherding. Spiritual shepherding. We'll, we'll talk about that tomorrow. Five things that derives from this one point. 
then I will end on that. See, you will come again. Hallelujah. There's an inclusion that takes place. I'm one with him in the spirit. So you might think that you are engaging a man, but I have the resources of God at my disposal. So in terms of performance, I can perform like God. The only thing that I bring to the table is called alignment. So sometimes I will need to fast for 200 days to achieve alignment, to know where God is, to understand the present revelation position of the Spirit. That's the only thing I bring to the table. I'm not creating any new thing. I'm not manufacturing something. I'm just trying to align with the resources that are available. This alignment huh, might lead you into the wilderness. May you not be in the city center when the Holy Ghost is driving you into the wilderness. Because God is spirit, you can miss him the moment your spirit is not in tune with him. It is only your spirit that is wired to be able and calibrated enough to be able to explore him. So we are supposed to explore him as astronauts explore space. How much of him have you explored? That's how strong you are to prosecute destiny. Your destiny did not come from government house. It came from heaven. You will need heaven to prosecute your destiny on earth. All, all, the, all the demons of hell will fight you because of that destiny. If you don't understand the context of your spiritual warfare, then you are not wise enough for life. Give me volume on that, your instrument. Oh my God. We explore God. Have you taken time to explore Him? Have you, have you, have you ever said, okay, I'm going on a fast from January and I don't know when I will stop. When I will stop is when He shows up. You will think that you are wasting your time. Okay, go now. You, it's after 10 years you will find out that you, your head start in the flesh was actually delay. It was a covenant with delay that you, that you caught. The way of speed is the weight. The challenge and what we bring to the table is alignment. Sometimes in order for you to find the rhythm, you must keep quiet for seven days and walk around the wall just so that you can find the alignment. As long as you are not aligned, you are naked. Man is nothing without God. It's nothing without God. It's nothing without God. So in my family, nobody will tell you, nobody will give you any law. But there are many unwritten laws. The first is, don't marry from another tribe. Nobody would say it's wrong. But the moment, if you are going to do it, you will do it alone. So there are already roadblocks that are determined to ensure that you cannot follow the liberty of your spirit. But nobody will enforce it. But the day you say you want to step out, then you'll find out that you are the only eagle under the sun. You will never be alone if you are working with the crowd. If you want to fulfill destiny, even your own will trust you out. So if you are not at home with the Holy Ghost as your friend, because Adam was alone, Adam was not lonely. You are going to be alone, but you must learn how not to be lonely. That was where I learned how to pray. Because I knew that my help was not, not in the hills anymore. 
I, I didn't need to look to the hills. My help was within me. And the only way I can find the help is alignment. So I will tarry. I will wait. Until, you know, he's a king. If we are dealing with Ogugu, you can, it's a servant spirit. You can send it on errand through enchantment. Can speak some enchantment and say, Go! It will go. This one is a king. Your tears cannot move him. Even your prayer cannot move him. He will move when he wants to move. So you must learn the protocol of waiting. Wait. If you don't know waiting, it means you still believe you are in charge. And he will, he will teach you. He will, allow, he will clear your doubts in 10 years time. It is when you are faced with a problem that is orchestrated from the realm of the spirit that you will know that your PhD degree that you got from the University of Lagos counts for nothing. And I don't say this to insult your, your effort. I'm just saying you are still helpless with the best of education. And for your information, I have a little education myself. <laughs> oh! You want to get a promotion in the office? I'm talking about where I came from. Ah. You will need power. You will need power. It's not, don't make noise. People make noise. You will need power. Because the people that are contesting with you for the same opportunity, they have power from darkness. Satan has blessed them. Except, except you are going for something that is not significant. If not, you will meet Satan on the way. You will meet his people. In the eyes of Jesus, in order for you to prosecute natural life, he claims that we need power. He said, these signs, we follow them that believe. Because as you travel on that path, you will meet men that have power. <laughs> so I began to learn alignment how to wait on the king how to wait on him fasted began in January February March April May June July August August 1 August 2 August 3 August 4 August 5 August 6, August 7, August 8. He now speaks to me and says, I see that you are praying. I say, what do, you, what do you mean by that you see that I'm praying? You see, I was not disciple, I was not taught. The moment you begin to pray, you begin to make effort, eh? and you are doing something like fasting and praying. He will set a time that he will visit you if you will continue. It can be nine months, three days. Nothing will change it. <laughs> I, I, I hope you know he has a calendar. His, cal His calendar of visiting every man. There is a schedule of visiting every man. What is man that thou art mindful of him? Or the son of man that thou visitest him? He has a schedule. Nothing. Your prayer cannot change the schedule. If you get tired and you don't arrive at the schedule, you will walk in darkness for another cycle. Oh. Oh. We pay the price of alignment. And I was not told, I was not told. I was not told that if Jesus wants to encounter you, if Jesus wants to visit you, the first thing he will do is that he will dispatch angels to come. I, I was not told. So there are four angels that began to come to my room when I entered into September. You know what? I stopped the fast. I continued with the angels for five years. I began to do miracles because I understand their ministry. I know how they communicate. 
I know what, when they come into the place, when they want to do something, I know, I know. I work with them for five years. But when I started the fast, it was not angels that I was seeking. I was seeking God. It was after five years, you called to me. Yeah. Uh-uh. What's wrong with you? It was this what you were seeking. Then I started fasting again after five years. Just like I, as I'm speaking now, those angels have come. Two of them are here. I want them to be four. Wait, I want them to be four before before I will start. I move with them. I saw miracles, saw signs, saw wonders. Then you called to me that this was not what I was looking for. As you are seeking God, many things will begin to appear. Prosperity will appear. Then if that's what your soul wants, you will veer off. And you will never be brought before his majesty. The people that told you that the goal of the gospel is prosperity, they spoke through the voice of Babylon. Mm. Oh. Prosperity is a byproduct of alignment. It's one of the proofs of alignment. Blessed is a man that walketh not in the counsel of the ungodly, nor standeth in the way of sinners, nor seated in the seat of the scornful, but whose delight is in the law of the Lord, and on his law does he meditate day and night. He shall be like a tree planted by the rivers of water that bringeth forth his fruit in his season. His leaves also shall not wither, and whatsoever he layeth his hands upon to do, it shall prosper. His alignment is a proof that you are in alignment. It's not a goal, it's a byproduct, it's a sign. I saw me now like a candy, he said. Teach us alignment. Teach us alignment. And show us how you make a little one a thousand and a small one a strong nation. Mm. Yes, I small. He said thy later ends shall greatly increase, not by the power of man, but by the power of the Holy Ghost of the living God. It's our time to find him. To gain alignment so that the little one will become a thousand. Your capacity must be fulfilled. Your ordination must find expression. You will need to mount up with wings. Mount up into the heavens. When you find your power with God, you prevail. Yeah. Yeah. Mamabatala <laughs>
Igamen sele barwa afeli askedo bende ikoskido boko saminale. Hey, hey, sani mori abakeso. Oh, talaberi makoria eskubi makanteli. Yeah, yeah. So falande ele keria. Kofi sasonde ele bakuria. Meziko me babreskete me robe na ike me skande boboria ama katesi ama santalia ama mekabonde ke asigo branda baboria amande kuria salabale. Oh, yelele ma, yelele ma man. Yalalama, yalalama. Kope mina laya, suve la bokoma, brai sele, brai makadebo, brai la suka mela isko. Nana na yebo sele. Yeah, la mama. Ha ha ha! Ama masai la boma. He came in la mama. Jesus, Jesus. You were designed to walk with the capacities of God, and your daily confession was ordained to be. It is not by power. It is not by might. It is by the Spirit of God. For this is not the work of man. This is the work of the Holy Ghost of the Living God. I will not be naked. I will not be naked. For my life in the spirit is a story that God is telling from heaven. I will not be naked. I will not be naked. Call of mercy, Bokori Mala. Es comba mi a celes que hizo mal. Para no mi seba. Para no mi macayandele. Para no ni a seco baminala. Y a sobele. Que no bosi. Que no bosi a mandele. Nobody <laughs> Shande boborika sante, yala bonsa la, yala kade bobori asika, bai kambe mina, bai kasa bobori, bai kaso mina sasala, ata bonsa katia, eko ba manatala, ika sa makonda, akabresko ba bayato, bebo kanso. Bebo kansala baboria, eskadi mala, eskadi mabokora, ayi la ba 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 se. Yela bo seminandel. A little one shall become a thousand. 
Thank you, Lord. In Jesus' mighty name. name. Now, media people, give me Acts chapter 9, verse 17 on the screen. Acts chapter 9, verse 17 on the screen. And Ananias went his way and entered into the house. Stay with me, stay with me. And putting his hands on him said, Brother Saul, the Lord, even Jesus Christ, that appeared unto thee in the way, as thou comest, has sent me, that thou mightest receive thy sight and receive what? That's number one. Are you there? I want to read another scripture to you. Number two. Then I will explain both of the scriptures together. That's the first scripture. He said, you need to receive your sight and then you need to receive the Holy Ghost. Why? Then Saul now tells the story again because this story he's telling in Acts chapter 9, he tells the same story in Acts chapter 22, he tells the same story in Acts chapter 26 and gives little more details in each case. Are you with me? All right. Let me give you another scripture. In verse 22, chapter 22. He's telling the same story again. The first time he received the Holy Ghost. Second time the story was told, he said, Brother Saul, the Lord Jesus that appeared to you on the way to Damascus sent me. Then he didn't talk about his sight problems the second time. He said, he sent me that you might know his will. He sent me that you might see the righteous one. He sent me that you might hear words from his mouth. Not words from a messenger, but words from his mouth. The Bible says in the book of Colossians that in, in him our lives consist. For we were created by him and for him. And in him our life consists. It means that the essence of your life is in him. You, will need, you, you see, such a person that has your essence doesn't need to chase you. If you are wise, you will chase him. The same thing that Ananias told Saul. You need to hear words from his mouth. You need to know his will. You need to see the righteous one. Every believer must have that experience. If you, if you want to fulfill destiny, at some point you will need to stand before Jesus for him to speak words from his own mouth, not from an angel. There are many things your pastor can tell you and there are many things that only Jesus can tell you. When Ananias was discipling Saul, 
he made him know that yes, I am sent by Jesus. But the fact that I came from Jesus, I came by Jesus, will not insulate you from seeing the righteous one. From knowing his will. And from hearing words from his mouth. After five years of working with angels and understanding the miraculous, how the angelic fast track and facilitate the miraculous, I began another prayer. This time, I wanted to know his will. I wanted to know why he gave me power. Because it's possible for you to have power and not know why. And you're squandering it for what you don't know anything about. I wanted to know his will. I wanted to see the righteous one. I wanted to hear words from his mouth. That was when I forgot how many days that I fasted. And I was in my hotel room in Dubai. Rehab Hotel in Sabka District in Dera. And Jesus came to my room. And he told me, he said, the youth, the youth, the youth, use the power of insight I've given you to deliver them from distraction and I will open the gates of nations to you. That is Jesus that told me that, not an angel. In my work with God, I've had angelic encounters where they read scrolls to me. This will happen. That will happen. This will happen. I've, I've seen that. The meaning of my life from 2009, when I had that encounter, to 2019, when I met Jesus again, the meaning of my life was captured in a 12 seconds encounter. When Jesus came into my hotel room, when I saw the light coming, I knew that if I, if I stay and behold the light, I'll be blind. So I laid down, closed my eyes, and covered. And he walked through the wall. He said, use the power of insight I've given you. To deliver them from destruction and I will open the gates of nations to you. That was how I started hopping from campus to campus. I did that for 10 years, 10 to 12 years. Those days I used to spend 1.3 million a year for tickets. I went around Nigeria six times. People even insulted me and called me campus apostle. But it was Jesus that came to me. On the 19th of August 2019, I was in Uyo in a hotel and he came back to tell me that I was faithful in the last assignment. Are you there? Go and resign because I want to take you to the nations of the world. At the time he told me to resign, I was already becoming a management staff in the oil industry. And that means too much money. My house rent money would have been 21 million every year, given to me in January. If in the line of duty I spend one night outside my home, they pay me in dollars. People will fight with amulets, they will fight with charms to get that position. I was two weeks away from the examination that would have entitled me to that position and then Jesus comes and he says, it's time for us to go to the nations of the world. You cannot be right if you have not heard from Jesus. You cannot be right. You, 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 you are at liberty to make out what you think life should be. You will be disappointed. You cannot be right if you have not heard from Jesus. 
He said, Brother Saul, the Lord Jesus that appeared to you on the way to that mask or sent that you might know his will. Oh my. How I wish what I'm saying will enter you. Especially if you are in ministry. Ask yourself, who sent you? Who? How did you come up with that name? Was it a crisis that suggested to you that what you needed to do was to start a ministry? Or was it your wife in the whispers, in, in your ears in the night, she suggested that? The way you talk, you talk like an evangelist. He said, brother, so there is so much the Lord sent me to tell you, but that will not insulate you from knowing his will. It will not insulate you from seeing the righteous one and hearing words from his mouth. In the first account, he says, I'm sent to restore your sight and that you might be filled with the Holy Ghost. Right? Are you still following me? The second encounter, you are supposed to use Holy Ghost to know his will, to see the righteous one and then hear words. Then the third one, you will now stand before kings because you have heard from his mouth. No man becomes great except he sees and hears Jesus. Meanwhile, in 2012, I had invitations to go for, to 12 countries to preach the gospel. Then I went to Jesus and said, are you the one that opened these doors? He said, he is not aware of doors. God saved me that I went to ask him. I would have started one premature uh, uh, international ministry that nobody sent me. That's how men come down with fornication and have children that are white and black. Nobody sent me. For three years, I, have, I had 12 invitations the first year because I was on cable. I had 10 invitations the next year. I had nine invitations the other year. He said he is not aware. So the other year, the, the nations I had invitations were poor. So I didn't ask him. I didn't ask him whether he sent him. So, so that my dad should be cleared. He now mentioned one. Say, hey, I'm sending you to the poorest. The poorest one, that's where he sent you. Where they cannot give you a honorarium. Your choices will be different if it is Jesus you are hearing. The ministries of these days that are ministries of marketing, management, and customer care, it did not come from Jesus. He, go and hear Jesus and deliver yourself from the rat race. Sent me to a nation where, when I saw their poverty, you don't need a dictionary to understand poverty if you see that nation. Any noble man cannot take money from them. We were raising money for their equipment because they were using the kind of equipment that they used to sell rat poison. You know that? You know, you know the equipment they used to market rat poison in the market. That was what they were using for 1,200 people. It was the Holy Ghost that was interpreting to them. If not, I was not hearing what they were saying. So we said, all right, let's buy equipment. I gave 200, was it? $200. My $200 was more than their whole offering. If they convert the offering of 1,500 people to dollars, my 200 was more than all of them. Is that a country you will take money? I promised them more money if I go back home. Which will use the post office to send $500. It took three months before it reached. But it reached. The day it reached, they were in debt and they were kneeling on the altar and asking God for deliverance or they'll be arrested. That was when they brought the letter. 500 US. They fell down.
I now realize that if I didn't hear Jesus, I would have been a rogue. I would have collected money from where I'm supposed to give. Can we pray? Finally. Then I'll pray for you. Jesus, I want to hear words from your mouth. I want to hear words from your mouth. I want to hear words. Words from your mouth. Words from the mouth of Jesus. Let the rat race end. There must be precision in the pursuit of destiny. The Lord of the harvest must cry into our spirit. We'll hear words. We'll hear words from your mouth. We'll hear words from your mouth. We'll hear words. The words of the pastor is supposed to encourage you in your pilgrimage to advance to hear the words of God. Just like the words of Ananias encouraged him to seek the words. Who we'll hear words from Jesus? Shilayama <laughs> He can send a labo man. Kula mi samo. Kula mi samo. Oh Jesus. Ozila e ikaye kama la kuma. Ozila mi ayoma. Ozila mi ayo. Saila kole ese so mama te la mai ikama yo bela ma ikama yo bela wo bela e saile kose za hanema ikabo sa yo ikabo sa yo Oh, Jesus. He may not see by you. He
Domina si cobranda baborea sabalonde. Thank you, Lord. In the name of Jesus. just took a look at the time and I see that it's late. So what we'll do tomorrow morning's meeting will be a miracle service if you need a miracle. We'll do all of that there. But I just want to leave you in this solemn moment to continue this prayer when you get back home. We'll get everything wrong if we don't hear from Jesus. And it's not enough to hear your pastor. God sent Ananias. He brought revelations to him. Brought disclosures. But told him. You will see. The righteous one. You will know his will. And you will hear words. From his mouth.